finish this sample up to the armholes and I had to rip the entire thing out. Uh, since I am working with mohair and finger and weight yarn held together, that can be really tricky to rip out without tangles. So I did um, wind directly from the sample uh, onto the ball winder and um, that actually worked pretty well. I didn't lose any yarn, which is really important, but I was two thirds done and I had to rip all my way back. Why? Well, uh, this is my original swatch. Um, and if you are it's upside down, familiar with um, the sort of fine art of swatching, you can see that for the plain and the yarn held double, I swatched flat in the round which is to say that I carried uh, the working yarn behind the swatch um, to mimic working in the round where you knit every round uh, without actually having to work, you know, whatever, 16 inches, 16, you know, 16 inches on, a, on the smaller circular needle I can. Um, this gives an approximation Usually it's pretty accurate, but uh, my gauge here was uh, five and a half stitches to the inch. Um, and I failed miserably um, in something that is really important for everybody to do, which is to continue to check your gauge on the needle. Um, the gauge on your needle is not gonna match your blocked swatch because what's on your needle is not blocked, but it should be close. And I didn't do that. And my gauge on my needle was five stitches to the inch. So <laughs> uh, I had finished up to the armholes and at this point in the pattern, you would, um, you're gonna bind off kind of right around here. And then you're gonna pick up for the front and back in just the, uh, the mohair. Um, and I wanted to do the bind off so that there's sort of, um, rather than just switch yarns, so that there is a neat sort of distinction, a line, like a line. Um, so I did the bind off and then I tried the sample on my dress form and it was huge. It was a good four inches too big. Um, and then I tried it on me and it was huge. It's supposed to have, um, it is designed to have negative ease at the bust, and this was at least three inches too big at the bust, so um, not good. And I had to rip the whole thing out, so uh, I have revised <laughs> my gauge to five stitches to the inch, and I recalculated my cast on, um, and I'm going to start again. But life of a knitting pattern designer you know if I had if this had been a project that um, maybe it was just for me personally um, I might have let it be too big or you know any I might have seamed it to pull away the extra fabric and then you know at the back maybe um, I could have done some mattress stitch to pull it in uh, and then sort of cut away the extra fabric. But since this is for uh, a design, I need it to look right when I model it. Um, and I need to make sure that all the information in the pattern is accurate. So <clears throat> that was not an option. Uh, so that is a good two weeks of work. All gone now. Yay. All right, so I had to restart my project. Um, but it turns out that I have already scheduled my tech editing, which had my original sample not been a disaster, um, would have been a lot easier because then I could work with my sample to finish my pattern and it would probably end up being uh, more accurate, but 
I already have my tech editing scheduled, and so now I'm gonna try to finish the pattern being only about halfway through the sample, which is not ideal. Um, there are definitely some designers that can create a pattern without having it the sample first. Um, and I have sort of uh, varying success with that method. Um, but like I said, I'm already on my tech editor schedule for this week. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to get it done. Uh, let's see, uh, do I have my, Um, and the, the really trickier part for this is the yoke, which of course, since this is bottom up, uh, I'm gonna work last. <laughs> so I'm really gonna kind of have to guess with that. Um, Cause here's what I've got right now for the sample. Um, and so here I am, I've got about what's this, I don't know, five inches done, which means I've got another four and a half to five inches before I do the pleat, and then another uh, about four inches over the bust, and then I'll finally be at the yoke. Um, we are in the midst of this lockdown, and um, my knitting mojo and designing mojo has really taken a hit. So. Um, I've got a whole bunch of designs that I'm working on right now, and <sighs> I mean, this is the one I'm most excited about, but even <laughs> this one, I'm, I just, this just feels like it's a struggle. Um, just with everything going on, most of my energy is going into homeschooling my children, one of whom is currently rolling around on the floor for, I don't know, some reason. Um, so by the end, you know, my work hours are reduced anyway, and then sometimes I sit down to work and I'm just kind of staring at the computer. Um, so it's getting hard, but I'm, I'm, I'm gonna keep pushing through. This is uh, definitely gonna be delayed. Um, I mean, you know, I didn't have a firm deadline, just I wanted it out by the end of April, but it's gonna have to wait until the end of May. Uh, even though I hope to finish the sample by the end of the month, <laughs> um, I still wanna do test knitting, so. Anyway, that's where it's at, and now we're going to try to do the numbers uh, for the rest of the pattern and get that draft submitted to my tech editor. All right, so I have all the numbers done for the body. That part is the easy part because it's mostly in stockinette with just the pleat. So what I'm really working on here is the numbers for the front and back neck shaping. There are no sleeves. This is an old, an old um, spreadsheet that I'm reusing, so at least I can get rid of that part, but uh, I've got some basic numbers to start the front neck shaping here, but I still need to, I think this formula is wrong. It's copied from the old spreadsheet. I don't think this is right. Um, so I still need to rework a lot of this. And what I'm going for here is kind of a wide, shallow neckline in the front with a deep V neck in the back. Um, so let's see how it goes. decrease rows for the neck shaping are kind of ridiculous. I'd need, let's see, here it's fine. No eight decrease rows um, at the neck edge, but here 28 decrease rows at the neck edge. No, because that's, you're only decreasing on the right side, so I would need uh, 56 rows. So that's like, It's 
seven inches. <laughs> All right, so much more math is to be done. And this is just for the front. I still have to do the back. Thank you.